As we continue to honor the late Minister Jackson in Tembu, we now can speak to the Deputy State Security Minister, Zizi Kordua. Uh, Zizi, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Of course, you and the late Jackson M. Tembu work closely together on ANC communications. It's a day that we were all gutted yesterday. Just tell us about how uh, you remember him, him being the mentor to you. Good afternoon, Shahan. Thanks very much. Um, thanks for accepting my and your understanding that I could not join you in your preferred uh, platforms, Skype or Zoom. Uh, you correct. Yesterday, I couldn't talk to you. There were various attempts to get hold of me to share some tribute and experience, personal experiences of Jake Jake, as we know, as we called him. As you know, that uh, one of the few people who inspired me in terms of political communication, it was him, Sakima Chozoma, in the early days uh, of our transition. Uh, but, but of course, little did I know that in the later years, I will work with him and also I will work under him. He was a very dedicated person, very committed. I lost a mentor. Somebody was very dependable. Uh, and the communicator and the propagandist par excellence. And I think the number of values that he taught us, primarily one of them, when he approached me just after we were sworn in in 2014, we were both MPs. At that time, he was a spokesperson of the ANC. I didn't know that he was not coming back. Just two hours after we were sworn in as MPs, he called me aside to say, I think you must consider going back to the house. And I was a bit confused because I did not know where that discussion came from. Um, and I was hesitant and I asked why. He explained why me. And he gave a number of other people who were being considered by the leadership. And after a long explanation, in the truth of the chamber, with a very genuine laughter uh, he, uh, after the explanation, I accepted that I will resign after two hours of being an MP and then go to the House. It is that conversation that made it easy for me when I was later contacted by and approached by the Secretary General, Kwete Mandashi, that I should come back to the House. A very genuine man, very adorable, very jovial, very principled. But you would understand that one of the things that I appreciated much about him was his work ethics, very professional, and he wanted everybody to do, to do his job or her job uh, in a manner that you appreciate that to be a spokesperson of the ANC, you're not talking to members of the ANC, you're talking to the public. Not everybody will agree with you, but not everybody, uh, when it disagrees with you, it means the enemy of the ANC. And that value is very important when you're a communicator of the ANC. But most importantly, Shahan, was the fact that uh, what Jackson taught us, I think I learned from him, was that you must always defend the right of those who disagree with you to say whatever they want to say. That includes the freedom of the media and, and so on. And I think that value is very important in today's politics. Yeah, and that's something you, of course, adhere to, because you and I had arguments on air all the time about things that were happening in the ANC, but you accepted those arguments and answered the questions. Uh, Zizi, tell us about the last time you saw or you spoke to the late minister and more about that interaction. Just last week, we spoke just immediately after he tweeted uh, to inform the nation that he has been diagnosed and contracted. Uh, I immediately called him. We had a lot of... Uh, very friendly and jovial conversation about it. We were talking about Simi, we were talking about the things that he's doing, and he was confident. And I left that conversation quite gango that uh, he will come out uh, very strong. Because he said, look, uh, I will defeat this enemy. Don't worry, as he calls me, this man. So he says, this man, before I will come back, make sure that uh, uh, you wait for me. And then, unfortunately, when I heard the news yesterday, I mean, it was a complete devastation, speechless, because he is a man whom I look up to as a mentor uh, in terms of communication. Uh, suddenly, uh, we, we are told he has departed. It's quite a sad loss. But I think uh, instead of really mourning, we must celebrate his contribution. He was quite selfless until the last minute, the last, uh, 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 until his last breath. He was quite a selfless person who committed and dedicated uh, to the service of the nation. Yeah. So let's continue talking about how we can honor the late Jackson Mtembu. Of course, he stood for what was right when it came to so many things within the ANC, especially against corruption. Well, as you know, during the time when he was a chief whip in particular, and he was a spokesperson earlier in earlier years, 
for those who are very difficult times, difficult years in the ANC. The whole issue about allegations at the time of uh, allegations about leaders of the ANC. And you, you know, uh, part of the conversation I had with him in 2014 was how difficult it will be for me to fit the shoes of Jackson, who was this person every day I watched with admiration on TV, defending and explaining the difficult situation and conditions and allegations that were facing the leaders of the ANC as well as the ANC. Uh, but he remained principled. He was somebody who was very vocal. And I think the fact that you are able as a leader of the ANC, where you have the mistakes that have been committed, you acknowledge and admit. And I learned from him that mm-hmm. the ANC is not a, in itself an invisible organization. There may, may be mistakes and missteps committed along the way. Part of communicating the, on behalf of the ANC is to admit when mistakes were committed and acknowledge and recommit the African National Congress to its revolutionary values of honesty, trust, dedication, and hard work. Zizi, what can the ANC do to learn for, from what uh, Jackson and Tambu stood for, especially when it comes against corruption? Well, it's one thing and one thing only. The reason we joined the African National Congress, it was found in the oath of membership, where you sign a form. One thing only is to serve the people, nothing else. Nothing above or nothing below. Is to serve and commit yourself that you are not joining the African National Congress for any material gains. You are not joining the African National Congress because you want a certain position and therefore you want proximity to resources for self-enrichment. It is clear in the oath of membership where our, all of us, we commit ourselves, we say, First and foremost, we join this organization to service of the people. All right. I am so sorry for your loss, and thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Deputy State Security Minister Zizi Kodwa.